This is Steve Wright for YUV Soft with a tutorial on advanced stereo generation techniques. In this video, we'll be looking at two advanced stereo gen options, edge smoothing to eliminate edge artifacts, and the use of clean plates for very complicated shots. In our previous tutorial, Stereo Generator Basics, we saw how to use the advanced stereo gen options of Smart Depth Map Dilation and Dilate Depth Map to improve the edges. Here we'll see how to add edge smoothing to improve the results even more. Edge smoothing is used when there are edge mismatches or ghosting between the left and right views that can't be solved by smart depth map dilation and dilate depth map. Or their use did solve most of the problems but introduced edge artifacts in other areas. The edge smoothing option finds edges that have different looks in the left and right views and corrects them by softening the sharp edges. Here I have four stereo gen nodes, each set with increasing options, so we can see the cumulative effect. If we start with a stereo gen with all default settings, we can see serious edge artifacts around the hand and shoulder in the left and right views. If we add Smart Depth Map Dilation, or SDMD, the edges improve, but there's still a serious mismatch between the two views. If we add Dilate Depth Map, the edges get better, but they still have issues. If we try increasing the DDMX value from 1 to 3, the right view improves, but the left view now gets glass caps around the edges. Since dilation expands the rotomask, the additional dilation has introduced artifacts in those areas where the rotomask was already a bit wider than the object. We've reached the limits of what dilation alone can accomplish, so we need to switch to a different approach, namely to enable the smooth edge strength option located here on the StereoGen property panel. The Smooth Edge Strength option affects both views by removing oversharp edges and reducing the glass dome effect. Once enabled, you can often go back and increase the DDMX value by 1 if needed. So the correct workflow with the StereoGen node after setting the parallax and zero level values is to first dial in the Smart Depth Map Dilation, then move on to Dilate Depth Map, then finally the Edge Smoothing. Here we can see the dramatic improvement starting with just the default values to steadily refining the StereoGen parameters and how at each stage the quality is improved. Using advanced StereoGen options, we were able to get very good results that would be entirely suitable for medium cinema quality. However, there are still some problems with stretching on the background here that are not suitable for a high quality cinema conversion. For these more difficult cases, we'll need to use clean plates, the subject of the next section. To start the discussion of clean plates, we'll start with a simple two-layer example. But first I want to highlight the autofill problem using this clip, and we'll see how easily a clean plate will fix it. The autofill approach works fine for many cases, but if the background is textured like this, and there are big depth drops like from this tower to the background, and large occlusion areas due to large parallax changes, the results may not be good enough for high quality conversion. The basic problem is that the autofill operation stretches pixels, so regions in textured areas will appear noticeably different from the original image and become clearly visible like here on the left side of the tower. In addition to that, the auto-filled region can exhibit temporal anomalies and flicker over time like this. By using clean plates, these problems can be quickly solved in a high-quality theatrical conversion like this created with YUV Soft Tools. Let's see how it's done. If you have clean plates created conventionally with a compositing program, they can be combined together using the stereo gen node with no need for additional roto. It supports RGBA processing, so by placing the roto mask in the source clip's alpha channel, it'll be used for the stereo generation. However, the stereo gen node can also output a mask to mark the occluded areas, and this occlusion mask is used to composite the foreground over a clean plate without the need for a roto mask, a huge time saver. Here's a clean plate with reconstructed background regions compared to the original clip. Here's the occlusion mask that the stereo gen node created for the left and right views. The black regions will be automatically filled in with the clean plate background. 
You can see the autofill stretched pixels here that have been filled in with the reconstructed background from the clean plate using the occlusion mask. Given the source clip and a depth map alone, the Stereo Gen node creates this output with stretched pixel artifacts, but it also outputs this occlusion mat, which when combined with this clean plate, creates this final composited stereo shot. Now let's check out the complete workflow. The node graph for a two-layer composite is very simple to set up. The foreground layer with its depth map is connected to a stereo gen node, and the background layer with its depth map is connected to another stereo gen node, and the two stereo gen nodes are then composited together using a merge node. The foreground stereo gen node goes to the A input of the merge node, and the background stereo gen node goes to the B input, and the merge node operation is set to mat. After the node tree is set up, the stereo gen node options can be set. Enable the occlusion output of the foreground stereo gen node only. As you can see here, without enabling it, you won't get the occlusion mask that enables the use of the clean background plate. Be sure to leave the occlusion output off for the background stereo gen node. Enabling it in the background will introduce serious compositing errors. Now here's a critical point. Except for the occlusion output, all of the stereo gen nodes must have their parameters linked so that they all have exactly the same values. You cannot, for example, have a different parallax value in the foreground than the background. This would introduce serious stereo errors. Remember, the single exception is the occlusion output, which must be on for the foreground and off for the background. Once enabled, the occlusion output has several parameters you can adjust to refine its operation. The expansion setting increases the width of the black occlusion mask for the foreground or background, while the blur strength softens their edges to blend the layers better. The default settings work well for most situations, but you might increase the foreground expansion, for example, to increase the width of the occlusion. Increasing the foreground blur will further soften transitions from the foreground to the background. Now that we've seen a simple two-layer composite, let's see how to set up a more complex five-layer composite. While a five-layer composite obviously has more layers, it's actually not much more complicated to set up than the two-layer composite. But if a two-layer composite worked, then why would you use a five-layer composite? Because the more you break a shot into separate layers, the more control you have over each layer, and the better the resulting quality. So let's take a look at a five-layer composite setup. While you can use any tools you want to create clean plate backgrounds, these clean plates were made with YUVsoft's amazing new background reconstruction node. It offers better quality for scenes with difficult motion and more control over what to inpaint. Keep in mind that depth maps for all reconstructed areas are required. Look for the upcoming tutorial on the background reconstruction node to learn more. The key to setting up a multi-layer composite is that you want to composite from the back to the front. So starting up here at the top, we have our rearmost layer, and it has its clip and its depth map, and it goes into its own stereo gen node, which creates the left and right views for that particular plate. This then forms the background input for this merge node. Then the next most layer, right here, goes on top of that and that becomes the background for the next layer closest to the camera. So that would be this layer, and then this layer, and finally the topmost layer is right here. Again, keep in mind that all the foreground stereo gen nodes have their occlusion properties turned on, while the background, the single background stereo gen node, does not. The occlusion is turned off. Very important. As mentioned earlier, all of the stereo gen node settings must be identical. However, the occlusion option settings in each stereo gen node can be individually adjusted for each layer for best results. And finally, here's a review of the results of all three approaches and how the quality improves as we increase the number of layers. Here's the autofill example with serious background streaking between the two buildings the two-layer composite with an improved seam between the buildings, and finally, the five-layer composite with a nicely detailed background 
ideal for a high quality conversion. Using the advanced options in YUV Soft Stereo Generator node, you have the complete freedom to break a shot into as many layers as needed without having to create complex node graphs. You can get exactly the stereo conversion quality you want for the least possible amount of work.